big shakeup in the heavyweight division. Um, the Saudis are gonna have to wait to um, gonna have to wait to uh, get some positive press for now. <laughs> for now, we'll be left with uh, gas prices might go up. They might be a little pissed. <laughs> they might be a little pissed. <laughs> yeah. Um, We'll get into that. We'll get into that much more in the future if that fight does end up there, because there's, it's not without controversy, and uh, there's some people with some very strong opinions about that. Nevertheless, Tyson Fury ordered to fight Deontay Wilder in a trilogy per a court order. It seemed to go from okay, it's on in the um, it's on in Saudi Arabia, and literally in a course of maybe 48 hours from its official to like, oh no, that fight's off, and. Fury Wilder 3 is on for July 24th, like, without missing a beat. It's almost like, was that always, did they always know that was going to happen? Um, Anthony Joshua seemed to be very pissed off, very upset, tweeting his frustration with Tyson Fury. They were going back and forth. You know, you expect that from Fury, but you very rarely ever hear Anthony Joshua talking as aggressively and angrily as he was, and, and, and rightfully so. I mean... The Fury's team had to know that this was a potential outcome. Um, but Wilder's going to get another shot at him. I don't know that that's the best decision for Wilder. Um, I mean, obviously, he's got the big eraser, but... I mean, the way Tyson Fury beat him up in the last fight, I don't know I don't know why he would be rushing to get in there with him again. But what do you think on that one? Well, I mean, listen, Wilder's got pride. Part of the reason why, you know, I mean, it was so hard for him to accept everything in the way he was beaten down was his pride. His pride has been trampled on. Uh, that's part. I thought he did a terrible thing in hiring. I thought he showed bad character, okay? I say what I believe. I think that's why people listen to this show and we appreciate you all and with me and Ken. We say what we believe, okay? On either side, either side of the aisle. There is no side with us. It's the right side. It's what we believe to be true. And I thought it was horrible what he did to Mark Breland, not only firing him for stopping a fight, but then blaming him and saying he poisoned the water. He put something... I mean, please. First, he started saying that it was the costume was too heavy was 45 pounds and it took Teddy, his legs. just the fact that you're using the word costume in a fight is funny enough don't yeah. wear a costume well, act yeah. like a friggin fighter i mean I, I, but if you're gonna wear one definitely don't say it's too heavy <laughs> costume uh, let me just have a sip of tea after that one hold on, hold on. <laughs> don't say it's too heavy if you're gonna wear a costume um that's that's my advice for today um, and if it is and if it is please tell me that as a heavyweight the costume was like 300 pounds because if a 40 pound costume like took your legs away then it doesn't sound like you did enough cardio or, or weightlifting in in camp well your mind is too weak in certain ways whatever you it sounds like an excuse it doesn't sound good and, and to do what you did to mark Freeland again poor just poor form poor poor character i'm sorry i'm sorry you don't like it all right you don't like it. Uh, don't do it. You won't hear it. You won't hear it from me. Um, but uh, as far as this fight, I, I don't see how, you know, the Fury and Joshua fight, you know, is obviously off now. And it's only going to be a matter of time uh, now you got Wilder Fury 3. Y you figure that Joshua is going to wind up being announced that he's going to be fighting Usyk. That's that's got to be announced any second now. You would think. Yeah. I mean, well, it's been know, ordered but, by the WBO, so I think yeah. it's just a matter of working out uh, the logistics. Yeah, getting a pen to the paper and working out, crossing the T's, dotting the I's, and all that stuff. I guess. Um, I, but the first thing with this announcement, I, I have to say, and I think my fans would be all fans would be disappointed if I didn't uh, go down this road, um, but. Once, once it wasn't Fury and Joshua, uh, I, I, you, you had to think, how could that be? After Aram said it was done, you know what I mean? I mean, Aram had said, Aram said it's done. I mean, the only thing I came up with, I started thinking, wait a minute, Aram, Bob Aram, you know, one of the uh, obviously uh, legendary promoters in the game, uh, he he says it's done. How could it then, like? 24 hours later, it's not done. Uh, and then I started thinking about it. He must have said it on a yesterday, not a today. 
Yeah, see, that's the tricky. You gotta be, you gotta be on top of yourself with these things here, Ken. It's important to always keep close track of those little things with uh, Bobby. I gave him a nickname, Bobby. Uh, Bobby Tails. That's what, <laughs> that's what I'm gonna call him, Bobby Tails. And and with with little Bobby, you know, little Bobby Tails, uh, we all remember the, we all remember the time the press had caught him on a little something he had said the day before, telling him. Bob, you told us the exact opposite yesterday, and Bobby quickly, Bobby Tails, I'm sorry, quickly explained, hey, hey, yesterday I was lying, today I'm telling the truth, <laughs> right? I mean, I mean, it's not my words, right? It's not my words, it's his words. So it's all full, ours, yours and mine, Ken. We take this together, that we listened to him yesterday. You can't listen to him yesterday. It's very important that you listen to Bobby Tales today. Today. Because then he tells the truth. Yesterday, well, in his own admission, he lies. <laughs> he, hold on, excuse me. <laughs> he lies. He lies a little bit. But, but having said that, here we are. We're going to have the trilogy. Uh, the thriller, not in Manila. And... Look, it's gonna, he's going to have to, with everything I said, we said the truth, you know, him blaming the costume, him blaming Breland. He better come up big here. He better come up. This is it. You talk about a, a, a moment. This is the moment. I mean, I know he's made millions of dollars wilder. I know he, that he knocked out all those, those guys that they lined in front of him and everything else. Uh, but you could also argue that the first time, you know, he beat Ortiz, but Ortiz was 40 years old. Pretty good fighter. Southpaw, good counterpuncher, good puncher, good amateur. But he was 40 years old. So he beat Ortiz. He got hurt in that fight. He came back the first time, and then he beat him in the rematch, too. He knocked him out with the right hand, the, the, the thunderbolt that he has, that great eraser. You know, he does a lot of things wrong, Wilder. A lot of technical things wrong. Always did. But he could always punch. Punches are born. They're not made. And... But he fought a lot. Of, hey, look, they all get padded records, all of them. I'm not saying they don't. But he, but let me tell you something. You know, he he fought uh, a lot of padded records, and and he knocked them all out. You know, like dominoes, boom, 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 boom. Uh, and then you can make the argument: the first time he stepped up with with you know legitimate talent. I mean, really legitimate talent. I mean, Ortiz was legitimate, but again, 40 years old. But when he stepped up to the level that you expect a heavyweight champ to be at when he's defending a heavyweight title against Fury, he came up short. I mean, uh, he had to draw the first time. A lot of people thought that that uh, that Fury won that first one. I'm not so sure he did. I'm not so sure he did. Um, it, was, it was a draw. It was close. He came off the floor twice. Those knockdowns uh, meant a lot for Wilder in that fight to catch up. There were a lot of rounds he lost, but there were rounds that I'm not so sure he lost the way that we took for granted uh, that he did, uh, you know, Wilder. But, you know, he got up off the floor, especially that second time, Fury, which was amazing. And then they have the second fight, and then there's no dispute. There's no draw. There's there's just one guy dominating. He walked him down. You know, he, he had shown throughout his career, Fury, that he could box. Uh, that he, I always said, you know, we talk about David and Goliath, right, when you talk about big and small. Uh, I always said that Fury was a guy up to that night was a guy who had the body of Goliath and the brain of David, where, you know, he, he, he thought he was a lightweight. He boxed, he moved, he used his legs, he slipped punches. I mean, you, you didn't see that from a guy that big, six foot eight, you know, 270 pounds, 260 some pounds. But you saw it with him. And then all of a sudden, what did he do? He changed. He changed. He, he goes into that fight, you know, he had a dress rehearsal. Uh, for it against the guy from uh, Sweden. He had to dress rehearsal where he got the bad cut. He had to go get it. He had to go press forward to win that fight. Uh, and then what does he do? 
He goes and he says, oh, I know how to go forward. I'm going to go forward now with Wilder. I, I see something, kind of like Max Schmeling said when he was getting ready to fight Joe Lewis uh, that first time. I see something. You know, I see something maybe in a character that's a little weak. Maybe he's a bully. I see the guy's a bit of a bully. Uh, you know, he's used to getting his way all the time. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go punch the bully in the mouth. I'm not going to dance around. I'm not going to box and take a chance that, that maybe he still catches me. I'm going to walk him down. I'm going to go I'm going to go and confront the bully. And you know what? That's what he did. That's what he did. And he physically and mentally broke him down. Now he's got to come back from that. Just like Joshua had to come back from what happened with Ruiz. Same thing in a different way, but you know, similar. He had to come back from that. He had to come back from where he basically gave up, where where Joshua gave up in that fight. It was a lot to come back from. And he got helped a little by Ruiz coming in 280 pounds, whatever, eh, whatever. But he made a change. He made a transition. He was ready. And that's that's what's going to have to be. There's going to have to be a train, a change, a transition. He's going to have to be mentally ready uh, to prove himself, really. Otherwise, everything else he did in his career, besides the bank account, that's going to stay there. Unless he's a maniac and he, he, he's got spending habits I don't know about. Unless he's a maniac, that's going to be okay. But, but his, his legacy, this is it. His legacy, his reputation, uh, everything else really doesn't matter. What matters now is how does he behave in this fight? What does he do in this trilogy? That's it. The pressure's on him. The pressure's not on Fury. The pressure's on him. Whether or not your career means anything or meant anything will be proven in this, in this one night. So um, there's, a, there's, a lot, there's a lot at stake here. There's a lot at stake. It's a very, very interesting fight. A lot of people think automatically that Fury's going to win. They think it's already a done deal. That that Fury, you know, broke him the first time. He's, uh, the second time is going to break him the third time. Uh, it's all over with with excuses and everything else. He doesn't have the character. He doesn't have the ability to do anything differently. Um, it's it's going to be a foregone conclusion. I'm not so sure. You know that saying, Ken? Not so fast. <laughs> not so fast not I'm so looking fast for, i'm looking forward to the build-up and the uh press conferences there's some bad blood now yeah there's some bad blood ken and uh not so fast first of all you still got that eraser the same one that dropped uh fury twice in the first fight and almost knocked him out the second time he's still got that tremendous eraser uh you know, I got to figure he's got pride. I know he behaved like an idiot uh, saying the things he said and doing what he did to Mark Breland and everything else. But I still, you know, I still believe he's got pride, uh, his own pride. And he knows where he is. He know, And he's call, he called for the fight, you know, to his credit. I don't know how real it was, but he, you know, he was... They were talking about step aside money. He asked for an unreasonable amount. But when you ask for an unreasonable amount of $20 million, you're basically saying, I don't want to step aside. I want to fight. I want yep. to fight. And you know that old saying, be careful you don't get what you wish for. Well, he got yep. the fight. I'm just saying, he got the fight. And to his credit, I'm giving him credit. See, that's the one thing about me, Ken. I knock the crap out of you. But I'll go in and I'll be on your side 10 seconds later if I think I'm supposed to be on your side. Because I'm just saying what I believe. For the reasons that they should be said, and give him credit, he wanted to fight. Um, you know, it was a it was a little strange situation because the contract called for a rematch. Uh, he he had the rematch clause, but it called for it at the end of last year that it had to be done by January before before January before the end of December. It had to be done before the end of the year. Guess what? It didn't get done before the end of the year. But here we are, court mandated it. Here we are, they read the contract whatever way they read it. And here we are, we didn't think it was going to happen. Obviously, Aram and them didn't think it would happen because they were going for, and Eddie Hearn, they were going for with the big fight, the mega fight, the huge fight, the biggest fight maybe ever. Jo Joshua, you know, and uh, Fury. But a judge said, no, it has to be done. And here it is. Uh, it's going to be done, and uh, it's it's going to be interesting for a lot of reasons. For a lot Very. of reasons. Very fury. I mean, imagine you, you think you're about to sign probably a hundred plus million dollar fight. Although this will be a big money fight too. And if Fury does what he did to him in the first round, first fight, assuming Joshua can beat Usyk, and that's a big if, then you know, then they get the fight. 
So a lot of intrigue in the heavyweight division. I'm curious to see what happens there.